All right. Yesterday, we started talking about the setting of a story and how important it is to understand where and when a story takes place. We read a story yesterday about Frank the Frog, and he went to try a couple different places, right, to find the perfect place to build his home. If we remember, he went to the meadow, but what was the problem with the meadow? There were beautiful flowers there, but there was no water, right? And then he went to the forest and it was really dark and leafy and, but still no water. It wasn't until he went to the pond where that was the perfect setting for him because it had the water and it had the mud because Frank was a frog, okay? So it's very important for us to understand the setting of a story, where and when a story takes place, because it helps us to better understand the story and maybe why the characters do what they do or things happen because of the setting. This week, we're going to read a very old story, but I love the story. It's called The Little House, okay? And we're gonna understand at the end of the story, what we're gonna understand, we're gonna try to understand, why the setting is so important in this story. Okay, so listen carefully. All right, once upon a time, there was a little house way out in the country. She was a pretty little house and she was strong and well built. The man who built her so well said, this little house shall never be sold for gold or silver. And she will live to see our great, great grandchildren's great, great grandchildren living in her. So there's the little house. I always love it because it looks like it has two eyes, a nose, and a smile. The little house was very happy as she sat on the hill and watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning and she watched the sun set in the evening. Day followed day, each one a little different from the one before. But the little house stayed the same. In the nights, she watched the moon grow from a thin new moon to a full new moon and then back again to a thin old moon. And when there was no moon, she watched the stars way off in the distance. She could see the lights of the city and the little house was curious about the city and wondered what it would be like to live in the city. So there she is, and now it's far off she can see. See how far away the city is and the stars? But see how she's still really out in the country, but those, but the city is all the way back there, okay? Time passed quickly for the little house as she watched the countryside slowly change with the seasons. In the spring, when the days grew longer and the sun warmer, she waited for the first robin to return from the south. She watched the grass turn green. She watched the buds on the tree swell and the apple trees burst into blossoms. She watched the children playing in the brook, which is like a little bit of water, okay? In the long summer days, she sat in the sun because summer comes after spring, right? That pattern of seasons. And watched the trees cover themselves with leaves and the white daisies over the hill. She watched the gardens grow and she watched the apples turn red and ripen and she watched children swimming in the pool. So there's the little house in the summertime. Very happy. In the fall, because fall comes after summer in our pattern of seasons, when the days grew shorter and the nights colder, she watched the first frost turn the leaves to bright yellow and orange and red. She watched the harvest gathered and the apples pick and she watched the children going back to school. So all those things that happen in the fall and then you see the colors change, right? Then what season do we come to? Winter, very good. In the winter when the nights were long and the days short and the countryside covered with snow, she watched the children coasting and skating year followed year. The apple trees grew old and the new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city. And now at night, the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. So there's the city now, it's right there. One day, the little house was surprised to see a horseless, horseless carriage coming down the winding country road. 
Well, remember, way back when, people would ride in carts by horses. What do you think a horseless carriage was? Cars. Very good. This is an old story. Pretty soon there were more of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon some surveyors came along and surveyed a line in front of the little house. That's what they do when they're going to build something. Pretty soon along came a steam shovel and dug a road through the hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road. Then some trucks with little stones. Then some trucks with tar and sand. And finally a steamroller came and rolled it all smooth and the road was done. So right through the beautiful field with all the daisies, they built a big road. Now the little house watched the trucks and cars going back and forth to the city. Gasoline stations, roadside stands, and small houses followed the new road. And everyone and everything moved much faster now than before. So if you look carefully, What's coming closer and closer to the little house now, which used to be so far away? The city, right? And she always wondered about what it would be like. She was curious about that city, right? More roads were made and the countryside was divided into lots and more houses and bigger houses, apartment houses and tenement houses, schools, stores and garages spread over the land and crowded around the little house. No one wanted to live in her anymore and take care of her, and she couldn't be bought or so she couldn't be sold. So she just stayed there and watched. Now look at her. Remember what she used to look like with all of the country around her and all the flowers and everything. And now look at her. Now that city is right behind her, right? Now it was not so quiet and peaceful at night, and now the lights of the city were bright and very close, and the street lights shone all night. This must be living in the city, thought the little house, and she didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed her field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. You don't see any of that now, do you? Remember when the city used to be all the way back here, and now it's right behind her. It's right around her. Pretty soon there were trolley cars going back and forth in front of the little house. They went back and forth all day and part of the night. Everyone seemed to be very busy and everyone seemed to be in a hurry. And now look at her. Now they've put like a little fence around her and it's just her in the middle of all of that. Pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth above the little house. The air was filled with dust and smoke and the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when it was spring or summer or fall or winter. The seasons all seemed the same. She couldn't tell the difference anymore. There she is and there's the train now going over top of her. Pretty soon there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house and she couldn't see it but she could feel it and hear it and people were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore and they hurried by without a glance. So now she has the subway going underneath her, the train going above her and all those people going back and forth in front of her. Do you think she's curious about the city anymore? I don't because she's living in it now. Pretty soon they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses around the little house and started digging great big cellars, that means basements, one on each side and the steam shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other side. Pretty soon they started building up and they built up 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. So they're making big tall buildings now and here's still the poor little house. She's almost getting lost in there, right? Now the little house only saw the sun at noon because it was directly above her and she couldn't see the moon or stars at night at all because of the lights of the city were too bright. She didn't like living in the city. At night she used to dream of the country and the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. The little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty. Her windows were broken and her shutters hung crookedly. She looked shabby, though she was just so good as house as ever underneath. And now there she is. 
Then one fine morning in the spring, along came the great, great granddaughter of the man who had built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees growing all around. Hmm, sound familiar? They found out it was the very same house, so they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked at the little house all over and said, sure, this house is just as good as ever. She's built so well, we could move her anywhere. So they jacked up the little house and put her on wheels and traffic was held up for hours as they slowly moved her out of the city. And there she is, she's leaving. At first, the little house was frightened, but after she got used to it, she rather liked it. They rolled along the big road and they rolled along the little roads until they were way out in the country. And when the little house saw the green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. They went along and along, but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried the little house here and they tried her there. Finally, they saw a little hill in the middle of a field and apple trees growing all around. There, said the great, great granddaughter, that's just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. And a basement was dug on top of the hill and slowly they moved the house from the road to the hill. And so there's the hill that they found. The windows and shutters were fixed and once again they painted her a lovely shade of pink. As the little house settled down on her new foundation, she smiled happily. Once again she could watch the sun and the moon and stars and once again she could watch spring and summer, the fall and winter come and go. And once again she was lived in and taken care of. Never again would she be curious about the city. Never again would she want to live there. The stars twinkled above her. The new moon was coming up. It was spring and all was quiet and peaceful in the country. And that's the little house. All right, so in this story, we wanna talk about where the story took place. Well, in the beginning of the story, it took place in the country, very good. And the little house, how did she feel when she was living in the country with the trees and the grass and the daisies and the apple trees and she could see the seasons happening and she could see the sun and the moon and the stars. How did she feel in that setting? She was very happy. Now she was a little curious, right? She was curious about that other setting in the story, the city, right? But it was far, far away. So she could just be kind of curious about it. But what did that setting start to do? What did the city start to do? It started to come closer and closer to her until she became a part of that setting. And what setting wasn't she in anymore? She wasn't in the country anymore, right? So the setting changed on her. How did she feel when the setting changed and all of a sudden she was living in the city? She was sad, right? Because of all the things that had changed, she couldn't see the grass and the trees. She couldn't see the sun, the moon, and the stars. She couldn't see the seasons happening. So she was very sad in that setting. So what happened at the end of the story? The great, great granddaughter came along and what did she do for the little house? She moved it back to the country setting. Very good. And how did the little house feel once she was back in that setting? she was very happy. So the setting can be very important. Like Frank, it was very important to him because those other places were great for some people or some animals, but that pond or the uh, meadow and the forest wasn't a good setting for him. 
just like the little house. The country was the setting for her and it made her happy. Some people might like the city. All those people that were in the city in the story, they might like the city. But it, that setting did not make the little house happy. So it was important for us to understand that that setting didn't make her happy, but the one that did make her happy was the one out in the country. So it helps us understand the character better who was the little house. All right. You have a pair of super, du super duper cool setting sunglasses. The setting is where or when the story takes place so we can see it. We can see what's happening. What you are going to do, and I'll show you how I illustrated mine, you are going to make setting sunglasses. On this side, you're going to draw the little house in her country setting. And on this side, you're going to draw her in her city setting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut mine out so you can see how once you make yours, how you're going to put these setting sunglasses together. Okay. All right. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to color your pictures in and then you're going to cut out the three different parts. So you're going to cut out this part. Okay. And then you have these two arms. Those are the arms of your glasses. You're going to cut them out too. Okay. And you have to be careful because they're little pieces, but you've been cutting all year. So you should be just fine. Okay. So I have my one cut out. All right, and now I'm gonna cut out my second one. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one arm, okay? And you'll see a spot that was white, right? That I left white on mine, okay? And I'm gonna put some glue on that, okay? I'm gonna put some glue on that. And I'm gonna glue one side of my glasses, okay? And then I'm gonna fold it like that, okay? And then I'm gonna take the other one, okay? And I'm gonna put glue on that, okay? And I'm gonna glue the other side of my glasses, okay? and fold it like that so that they're really like glasses, okay? And then what you can do is you can put on, let's see if Mrs. Rainey can do it. It's gonna look kind of silly because they're a little bit too small for my face. And then you can put on your setting sunglasses from the little house and you're gonna show her in the country and in the sitting, okay? So you can put your sunglasses on. All right, my friends. Great job on that. And you know what? I will, if you would like, I will set up a flip grid and you can put your sunglasses up on the flip grid. You can wear your sunglasses and show us your sunglasses on the flip grid. Okay. All right. I will add that one on for um, today. Okay. All right, my friends, I'll see you in a little bit. I hope you had fun with the little house. Bye friends.